They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just can't get into it because they would never understand. Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at the most recent price action and what I think is likely to happen next. As I get into the video, if you find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I really do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And if you haven't yet joined us in Discord, guys, check it out linked in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking crypto 24 7. It's completely free, and I don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there. So why not go ahead and check it out? Let's uh, let's jump right down into this video and take a look at what's going on with BTC. Uh, we we'll take a look at the smart money concept side of things, but before we do that, let's jump into uh, the Elliott Wave theory side. Okay, so obviously Elliott Wave theory, everything is following along uh, the plan nicely uh, as per the previous videos. Uh, we did see this move down into our target range. We've fact we wicked right into it at 25,884 was our low side and 26,144 was the high side our actual low uh, on this particular candle well so more wick than anything else um came down to 25,871 so ever so slightly lower than the expected range this puts us now firmly in that fourth wave movement and expected move to the upside uh, a little hint as to the intro there um, so you know there's nothing unusual going on here uh, this is kind of as we were kind of expecting and why i said that realistically speaking this fourth wave can push all the way up there if it needed to towards twenty seven thousand five hundred. there is nothing unusual about this move at the moment uh, very much an overlapping corrective structure uh, with a, a kind of impulsive um say impulsive that's probably a bad choice of words but with a um institutional candle here basically creating a fair value gap that we kind of came back down and filled so for the most part everything's looking pretty good so we have the wave one we have an irregular flat this one's going to stump a lot of people unfortunately uh, an irregular flat right in there a little bit harder to spot um that is not a wave one all the way down into this low point um but in fact you know it's an irregular flat for the wave two now up here we can see that our wave four has crossed our wave one this is allowed under the types of diagonal structures that i think that we are finding ourselves in and if I come up to my examples, uh, which are just up here, okay, we can see that this final fifth wave movement will either be one of these structures. Uh, we kind of have ruled out uh, the idea that we are in a contracting or ending. Um, yeah, you know, we we're basically we've ruled out the contracting diagonal, uh, and we are just left with the expanding or ending diagonal structures within that final fifth wave movement, right? And um, so we know this is to be kind of where we sit at the moment. I'm liking the idea of an expanding one. The way that this fourth wave has gone up, it could be a pretty sharp drop for our fifth wave to make this an expanding um, diagonal structure. And I will also say uh, that it's possible that maybe our third wave is still not even complete as well. But we'll keep a close eye on that and see how it kind of goes. But you can kind of see here uh, that our target range, the next one that we're really looking for, it doesn't have to go all that way, by the way, guys. We only really needed to come down here to 25,540 to complete our next five wave structure. And then we can start to see that as a wave three situation on a bigger macro level. Uh, I'll say a bigger macro, just an extra layer higher. Um, and then, of course, we'll be looking for another fifth wave to come down towards 24,864 that'll be another way three complete then and then we'll come down here into the 23,972 uh, which I know is slightly off a little bit I think it's actually a little bit lower more towards the 930s um, that area would basically complete the final third wave movement uh, and then we'll basically be in a very bearish uh, trend based structure to the downside so there's a lot of things here that's going on uh, within our Elliott wave structures um, but I just wanted to kind of say yeah everything is kind of going along uh, according to plan nothing unusual at this stage anyway uh, so fourth wave can push right the way up there to 27,500 if it wanted to I don't suspect it will at the moment we're finding resistance on the 200 EMA we can see that right in here and apologies for moving this around a lot but uh, you can kind of see right in here we've got that 200 EMA and we're finding this is our resistance line at the moment okay and so at the moment we can see that the 50 EMA the red line and our 200 EMA are getting closer um, and if we do lose the 50 EMA I think that's going to be an indication that we are looking to move down now in terms of the fourth wave movement to the upside it's very overlapping and corrective uh, it's possible that we have a little bit higher to go here 
Um, and I would say if we're going to be targeting anything on that one, it has to push up uh, towards this level right here. Okay, we'll just mark that in. There we go. Um, so that's basically 27,000 to 27,132 approximately. And that's because I would look at this as a 335. And that fifth wave movement or five wave movement is right here at the very end. Uh, looking like that. Uh, otherwise, what we'd have is a three wave correction right there. And we'd have a three wave correction right up here as well. In fact, I could got a couple of different ways of doing that one. We could either put the wave A there and B down there, however you want to do it. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter uh, because it is a corrective structure of A, B, and C. And so even if we push up into that range there, it is all a fourth wave movement and not a trend reversal. Um, so all in all, we still look for that move to the downside to come into that fifth wave. And if it is an expanding uh, diagonal, then this is going to come down really, really deep on that final fifth wave. It will be the biggest wave. Wave one's the smallest. Wave three cannot be the shortest, uh, uh, will not be the longest, in fact. Um, and so wave five will be longer than wave three uh, in the expanding diagonal. And that wave three is pretty large. So we'll be looking at a pretty big move in that final fifth wave movement to the downside. And uh, so we might actually see this uh, this really kind of come down hard under that pattern. Of course, it's possible that we just hit this low around 25,540 uh, and it will be an ending diagonal in instead. And that's also very valid within uh, the structures that we see here at the moment for for this one so for the most part everything is kind of following along quite nicely nothing unusual uh, from our Elliott wave theory structures now if i zoom out of this just a fraction here uh, ultimately what am i talking about uh, for those who are not overly familiar with all the rules and whatnot but basically it's a wave one wave two wave three wave four all of this is our final fifth wave movement and it's a diagonal uh, and then once all that completes that'll be a wave three out of this one so we have a wave one well, that's a wave two up there. All of this recent move here is our wave three, which kind of gets confirmed at that 25,540. Uh, then we bounce up into a wave four, come down into a fifth wave movement. This one will then go, kind of get triggered out when we hit this next level of 24,864. Um, and that's then going to be a wave three from this one. So this is a wave one, wave two. All of that would be our wave three. We bounce up for wave four. We come down uh, into, um, actually it would have to be, this one down here um, and it would basically be coming down deeper than our 23,972 or 30 or whatever it was on the daily and um, so you can see how that would nest out and give us our structures overall um, a couple of little uh, things to kind of note in there so I, I clear this out just so that we can see what's going on with this, in this little structure here but all these 1.618 targets are showing us a nested position nested structures within our five wave counts and uh, I've went through this before I'll do it again for anyone who is new when we have a five wave pattern like this each of these have five waves inside them okay you can have slightly different variations of five waves um, except for the wave three which typically would not be uh, anything more unusual than an impulsive structure but you have this and then inside each of these you'd have these little kind of micro five wave moves right and and so you get this nesting structure kind of occur uh, within our structures right and it kind of goes down they call these degrees uh, you'd right click on these for example you go to your degree setting and you change uh, you know whether they are primary cycle super cycle grand super cycle all that kind of stuff right and so it all depends on the time frame that you're on as to how you nest these things down uh, but essentially what you're looking at is that nested structure going on inside here in bitcoin and we're yet to really hit those big levels uh, just yet and um, but when we do they'll basically be our daily impulsive uh, structures forming out for a trend reversal to the downside um, at the daily level but at the moment this is an hourly chart and it's showing us all those nested structures that are basically indicating where we are likely to go next okay so that's the elliott wave theory side of things <clears throat> is a little bit complicated hard for um, some people to understand sometimes because of the, all the rules that are associated with it but it is what it is uh, the rules are very black and white once you actually know what they are implementing it though is a little bit difficult um, i did put a course together for elliott wave theory if you're not familiar check it out cheeky school linked in the description below uh, we are running a 50 percent off at the moment using the coupon code springtime um, i'll try to put that in the description below uh, for anyone who is interested um, let's go over into the smart money concepts side of things um, okay so smart money concepts so smart money concepts is showing us uh, the market structure and from and through the lens of smart money and smart money is basically big funds that can move a market okay so you I usually break this down into dumb money and smart money okay so dumb money unfortunately kind of gets a it's a bad label 
uh, don't make it up. It's just a label. Let's not get too offended uh, at this because I will include myself as a retail investor, but dumb money typically is retail investors. Okay, so essentially, me, like like minded individuals like myself, we, yeah, we we're classified as dumb money because we can't move the market in the same way that uh, smart money can. And smart money is basically just institutional level funds, um, hedge funds, and and basically big money that can move a market. Okay, so dumb money, smart money, or retail institutions. However, you want to want to look at it. Um, for the most part, we I don't don't generally use the word dumb money or the phrase dumb money because it's not it's not very nice uh, to our fellow retail investors. So uh, I much prefer to say just retail and smart money. But um, yeah, that's kind of the ins and the outs of that. Um, anyway, moving on, market structure. The market structure through this lens helps us understand whether or not we've got manipulation occurring and whether that manipulation is dragging the price in a specific direction or whether or not um, smart money is jumping in or out of a market in a really big way. Okay, so sometimes you see manipulation, you see testing specifically around liquidity, as in where is the money in the price and uh, how can it be extracted, right? And that's really a smart money kind of uh, mentality, specifically in bear markets. It's all about grabbing liquidity and not so much about accumulation. Um, sometimes it can be both, but for the most part, uh, large institutional funds here, the only, only thing they're interested in is grabbing as much liquidity as possible and extracting it from the market, Okay, making money. That's essentially what the objective is here um, from smart money funds. So when we see um, you know, smart money and we see the structure of the smart, smart money, it helps us understand uh, what the uh, mentality is from the, that smart money uh, coming in and out of the market. So right now, we are in a bearish state of play on this one hour chart, okay? Uh, this has pretty much been the case for quite some time. It should be no surprise. We have a bearish change of character up here, side here. Uh, this is from April. We confirmed it with this break of structure over here. Uh, this was happening over in April as well. We've got another break of structure up here. Uh, that is in May, at beginning of May, uh, confirming that we're still bearish. We have another one over this side here on the 8th of May, also confirming that we are bearish. We then got a change of character to bullish state of play. But I was saying during this moment that this was a false flag and it didn't look right because it, Elliott Wave Theory did not agree with it. And Elliott Wave Theory was correct and we got another change of character back into a bearish state of play. Okay, and we are still bearish according to Elliott Wave Theory and we're now back to being bearish, even though it only lasted very briefly here uh, on smart money concepts. Okay, so we know that our structure for Bitcoin on these micro timeframes is bearish, not bullish, right? So we know that that is the structure. So going out of the structured side of things, we can take a look at what's been going on most recently from a smart money concepts point of view. And we can see that we have a strong high, weak low. This is an indication that we are in a bearish state of play, okay? And we are unlikely to push up higher than that swing high, okay? And we are likely to come down lower than the weak low or this uh, swing low area, okay? And um, so that's very obvious within our data here as well. We can also see all these red areas. These are internal sell order blocks. Okay, and so those areas are where the sellers are and they're likely to push the price down, suppressing the price into a further downside. We can also see something called equilibrium. Equilibrium is a 50% Fib level essentially, uh, and it shows that price will react into this range. Normally, if you um, find support on the equilibrium, then you'll push up. And if you get rejected, you're going to push down from there. Okay, pretty basic supply uh, demand, but also a little bit more on the resistance support kind of uh, mentality. Now, this yellow box area, I had to draw in myself. Uh, this is what, what we call a fair value gap, and it's created from an imbalance in the order books. This indicator by Lux Algo is great, but it doesn't always draw on all the fair value gaps. And so I had to draw this one on manually. OK, um, so in here we can see this gap, uh, which is between 26,830 and 27,111, uh, is an imbalance in the order books. Basically, a large sell order came in here from an, a smart money fund. OK, but there was so much to sell, there wasn't enough liquidity or enough buyers to buy up what was being put up for sale. So price comes down to where the liquidity is and it comes down into this lower range. Now that's not ideal. Okay. And so that creates a fair value gap. And the reason that it's not ideal is they wanted to sell it up here, but they ended up having to kind of average their price and sold significantly lower than they wanted to. <clears throat> so 
they stop selling. Uh, and what tends to happen is price likes to come back up and graves back in and fill the liquidity of the area that was left behind. Okay, there was insufficient liquidity here. And so price wants to come back up and fill it. It's kind of a natural way of doing it. When price comes back to this range, you expect continuation uh, simply because, well, they can start selling again at the right price, which they couldn't sell from up here. Now, it's not always the case because sometimes they might have just completely filled their sell orders within this range. And sometimes they, they have to stop selling and they just basically have to wait for price to come back up and sell again again okay so it's all about liquidity i can't stress that enough right we always get kind of confused or uh, retail kind of gets themselves all caught up in lots of things that don't really matter such as like market cap for example right the only things that really matter here are liquidity and the supply and the demand and when you understand those three things you understand how the market is more than likely going to move and um, so a move up here we saw us wick in we haven't finished this yet though because we haven't completely filled this gap out so uh, we may come back a little bit higher here and grab that out now it's no coincidence that when we take a look at our fib levels here and we think of this as a final fifth wave movement to the down uh, to the upside before we have that correction that our elliott wave theory structure was saying that we're going to be somewhere right around here and in doing this move, and if we were to rally up into that range between 27,000 and 27,132, well, then we're going to fill that fair value gap out and then we will get rejected. This area also happens to coincide with some resistances from the previous areas as well. So it does look like there's a small push upwards. Um, doesn't have to happen, but there's a small push up here uh, that could, could occur. And that basically from this range, we'll be able to get rejected and start to talk about this move to the downside. You can also see that there was a large buy order added here and um, this fair value gap again you know they wanted to buy it here price moved up because there was insufficient buyers and liquidity uh, in his range uh, so insufficient sellers in this range so price pushed up a little bit higher and price is starting to come back down into this fair value gap that's a green one here that has been marked up by the indicator of smart money by lux algo okay so yeah for the most part it looks like we're going to be experiencing some volatility this weekend. Uh, I'm expecting a small push upwards, but ultimately we are looking for that move to the downside. We're looking to break the low and we're looking to kind of finish off that final fifth wave movement before we have a significant bounce upwards for another wave four, before we go back down into another wave five, which will then bounce us up into another wave four, which will then take us up into uh, or down into another wave five there's going to be some extreme volatility we're going to see the bulls get wrecked we're going to see the bears get wrecked it's going to be hard to trade because there's lots of different things going on it's going to be looking like we're bouncing all over the place it's going to look like there's a lot of manipulation going on and you know some of that's going to be true some of it's not going to be true and i think ultimately we're going to experience um, some pretty extreme volatility over the next few weeks uh, as things start to play on out one of the things i'm confident on though is that eventually once all these structures play out We'll be revisiting the twenty-eight to twenty-nine thousand dollar range. I do expect that to occur, but not until we start to finish off some of these lower structures first. Um, so a significant bounce to the upside, I am expecting, um, but just not right now. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm going to leave this video right there. If you did find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I really do appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications, and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And if you haven't yet joined us in Discord, guys, check it out. Link Linked in the description down below. Until the next one, though, guys, have a fantastic day. We are not financial advisors, and none of what we have communicated verbally or in writing here should be considered as financial advice. It is not. Do your own research before investing in any digital asset or affiliate offers, and understand that investing in any crypto is risky. If you do, you need to be prepared to risk your entire investment. This video is for information and entertainment purposes only. All our videos are strictly personal opinions. Please make sure you do your own research and never take our opinions for financial advice. There are multiple strategies, and not all strategies fit for people. Our videos are not financial advice.